Galwaf Knishad Kenneth Laysol Cymru i Drefn. An item E, question I brief for Needog. Question Ian Andrew R.T. Davis. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, First Minister, what action has the Welsh Government taken to promote Cardiff as a destination for financial services? We are promoting Cardiff, including its enterprise zone, as an internationally competitive area for companies to locate, and we have a strong pipeline of inquiries. Thank you, First Minister, for that answer. Uh, many times in First Minister's questions and ministerial questions, we hear about the links that the Welsh Government have to other devolved governments. Uh, an important part in promoting Cardiff, would you not accept, is the Mayor of London's role and Cardiff, in, uh, sorry, London in particular, as financial services sector. What discussions, if any, has your Government had with the Mayor of London and the London Assembly uh, about alerting them to the opportunities here in Cardiff? I met with the um, Mayor's Chief Financial uh, Advisor the other day, and I could see great synergy. Do you see the same synergy that I could see being developed? Well, the Minister has met the Lord Mayor of London, not admittedly the Mayor of, of London. Uh, I can say the message is getting across in London anyway. For example, the FT and the Evening Standard recently described Cardiff as a great nearshoring location for international business. And of course, we have our own office uh, in London whose job it is to uh, look to bring investment into Wales. Julie Morgan. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, would the First Minister agree that the Coalition Government has done no favours to the financial services and, uh, in Cardiff um, because of its proposal to offshore 105 jobs uh, from Companies House um, in my constituency of Cardiff North? And these are jobs that have been outsourced from the DWP, then outsourced from the Cabinet Office, and now are to be uh, offshored to India. Well, that, that's a shocking statistic, but it shows what the coalition government does best, and that's export jobs. Leanne Wood. First Minister, Wales has lost many jobs in recent years, uh, with multinational companies choosing to relocate elsewhere, and indeed government jobs relocating elsewhere. Do you think that there's more that you could do to support the Wales Co-op Centre to help workers finance and organise their own buyouts under such circumstances? And will the Welsh Government commit to considering, and if appropriate, uh, facilitating workers' buyouts as a matter of course when foreign investors are looking to with Draw activities from Wales? Well, I can assure the uh, leader of Plaid Cymru the Welsh Government hasn't uh, outsourced jobs uh, out of Wales. Uh, nevertheless, I take her point that it's important uh, that a cooperative <coughs> model is seen as a workable model, and we see good examples of it across Wales and have done in the past. Uh, working with the Wales Cooperative Centre, yes, we would want to uh, see uh, more cooperative models being rolled out across Wales in the future. Question two, Lindsay Whittle. Uh, Dale Clowes, um, First Minister, what action will the Welsh Government be taking now that the report on public attitudes to smoking in cars carrying children clearly indicates support for a ban to be imposed? Yes, as we've said on many occasions, we will consider legislative options once we've reviewed the evaluation of our Fresh Start Wales campaign in the summer. Well, First Minister, you, you will be aware that 82% of the public in Wales have agreed now that smoking in cars carrying children should be banned, and the same percentage said they would comply with a ban if one was introduced. The United Kingdom government, after pressure from Labour members of the House of Lords, will be introducing legislation next year, and the signs are that the Scottish Parliament will do likewise. What possible reason is there for your government to drag its feet on this issue, please? We had already dragged our feet. We were the first to suggest it, in fact, uh, long before England and long before Scotland. Uh, and what we said was that we would conduct a, a, a survey over the course of two years. Uh, that is now complete. We will examine the findings uh, of uh, that exercise and then look to legislate uh, if those findings are robust. And the member is right. Uh, it, it does appear that there, are, uh, that, it is, that it is, there is widespread public support for such a ban in Wales. Jonathan Saunders. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Minister, you are correct. There is overwhelming support to end the smoking in cars with children present. And with the Fresh Start campaign due to end this week, um, launched two years ago, I do ask, how well has this campaign engaged with the many across Wales? What is the level of comprehensive feedback and data that you have acquired already? And when will you be deciding what further action your government will take on this issue? Well, the report, uh, Smoking in Cars Carrying Children, was published at the end of November of 2013. Uh, it showed that there's been an increase in the uh, number of people who believe that smoking in cars carrying where children are being carried should be uh, banned. Uh, that is something we are uh, considering, of course, uh, and we will uh, respond uh, before the summer. I can now question I gan Arwen we replied, yeah, uh, and Gantaf Arwenid Urthblaid. 
Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. First Minister, when was the last time Ed Miliband sought your advice on health policy? Well, I wonder when the last time it was that uh, the Conservatives sought the leader of the Conservatives' advice on transport policy. Yeah. Quite often, actually. Only last week. <laughs> but I notice you chose not to answer the question. Uh, it is interesting to know that the reason why you wouldn't ask that question, because no doubt he'd be very embarrassed to ask you for advice when you look at the record of the Labour Party here in Wales. Last June, last June you said that the figures in Wales were going in the right direction. Well, why, if they're going in the right direction, are 15,000 Welsh cancer patients now seeking treatment in English hospitals? And why, if they're going in the right direction, are 14,000 patients waiting on a 14-week diagnostic test wait list? If he has figures that show that 15,000 cancer patients are going to England for treatment, I invite him to produce them. That's the Tory line from Central Office. No, if he has ac actual figures that support that, we'd all be interested in seeing those yeah, figures. No, the reality is, of course, that cancer waiting times in Wales are better than they are in England. If you want to be treated for cancer, you will be seen quicker in Wales than in England. It's about time Jeremy Hunt ensured the NHS in England provided the right level of treatment for cancer patients in England refer one, to one point about the 14,000 patients who were waiting on a diagnostic wait time for 14 weeks or more, and the figures that I put to you last, put to you last week, about 28,000 patients waiting eight weeks or more for diagnostic treatment. Is it not the case, First Minister, with a Kinnock back in the Welsh Labour fold, that most probably, most probably the best line that can be thought when you think of a Kinnock senior is if you vote for Welsh Labour, you better not get ill here in Wales? Well, I, I, I think there are many of us who will take a bit of pinch of salt uh, order, what's order, said by order. The, uh, the Conservatives. Uh, you know, let's talk about uh, what they've failed to do uh, in the, uh, the last few weeks. Failed to stand up for Wales on electrification. Let's just examine again what David Jones said on the 16th of July 2012. This is an extra £4.2 billion of the funding we are announcing today. A lot of it going to the South Wales Valley Lines. The South Wales Valley Lines are going to the Secretary of State. A lot of it going to the extension of the GWR route to Swansea, said the Secretary of State. 16th of July 2012, the Leader of the Opposition said. This is what our rail network needs. Electrification to Swansea and across the Valley Lines will provide a priceless boost to both the region and Wales as a whole. This is the Conservatives positively regenerating, that's the word, positively regenerating Wales. I mean, was he misled or was he misleading? We look then further on. Byron Davis. Byron Davis. Byron Davis, Byron Davis said, this is what he said, the investment in our Order. railways from Conservatives in government is one of the greatest infrastructure projects since Victorian times, he said. Since Victorian times. Was he misled or was he misleading? 31st of October 2013, the Prime Minister said, I know we need these infrastructure investments in Wales. It's this government that's putting money into electrification of the railway line to Swansea and, of course, of course, the Valley Lines. Was he misled or was he misleading the people of Wales? We take no lessons on transport or health from a party that fails to stand up for Wales and has thrown the towel in when it comes up to standing up for the people of Wales and modernising our railways. The first minister put a challenge down. I he think did not he... stick to the question. How was that? I'm sorry. I quite happily respond to it. I will quite happily respond to it. Is it somebody's birthday party today, or are we just particularly jolly? I don't expect the First Minister to have to shout, and then I can't hear him. So if you can just... Arwenu, a Democratic I'd read Radol Cymru, Kirsty Williams. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, how often do you think a District General Hospital in Wales should receive an unannounced visit from the Healthcare Inspectorate? That is something, of course, that the uh, Minister is looking at to make sure that the uh, health care uh, inspection system is more robust. Uh, I, that's not what I asked, Minister. I asked you, how often do you think a Welsh District General Hospital should receive an unannounced visit from Healthcare Inspectorate Wales? That is a matter for the Inspectorate, because there are some hospitals, as with schools, who will need more inspections more frequently. That is a matter, of course, for the inspectors in their professional judgment. I'm amazed that you don't have an opinion, uh, First Minister. 
But let's be clear, even if you don't have an opinion, Healthcare Inspectorate Wales <coughs> does. Uh, it says that it should be visiting a district general hospital at least once a year. For our more sophisticated hospitals, such as the one in here in Cardiff, at the Heath, they should be visiting twice a year. In reality, they're only able to get around to district general hospitals once every three years. When will you put in place support for Healthcare Inspectorate Wales to enable them to carry out the level of inspections they say that they want to and that they need to, to be able to reassure themselves us as politicians, you as the First Minister and the Welsh public, that our hospitals are as safe as we would all want them to be. <coughs> I'm surprised to hear the leader of the Liberal Democrats suggest that some of our hospitals are unsophisticated. She said that our more sophisticated ones, I take the view that all our district general hospitals are sophisticated and should be able to offer as a service that is as local as possible. I do not take the view somehow that um, sophistication runs only in some hospitals. That's an unfortunate turn of phrase, and I'm sure that uh, those who are working as nurses and doctors in those hospitals would take note of what she said. As far as the, uh, the inspectorate are concerned, they have said that they wish to uh, look to inspect hospitals more frequently. That is something the health minister is looking at doing to make sure that when we are attacked by Tory central office and people uh, made frightened by those attacks on Wales that we saw over the weekend, that people can have faith in their health service. Mark and Olaf, Arwenis, Plaid Cymru, Leanne Wood. Dear Llywydd, last week Labour published a paper on the future <coughs> of devolution and in that paper there was a commitment to keep the Barnet formula. The paper says, and I quote, the Barnet formula should remain as the funding mechanism for public services. Was the First Minister consulted on this important policy announcement? She's talking about the Scottish proposals. They're not a matter for me. The view of Welsh Labour and the view of the Welsh Government is there needs to be Barnet reform. One nation Labour. <coughs> so with the First Minister told me that he would fight for a commitment to fair funding in Labour's UK general election manifesto. He said, it is important that fair funding is looked at from the perspective of the whole of the UK. Who does he think his party leader will side with on fair funding? With him or his Scottish counterpart? The people of Britain, fair funding across the whole of the UK. Um, she seems to understand what's in the UK general election manifesto before it's actually been written. And I can assure her, my view is, and I have expressed this to Ed Miliband, that the Barnet formula will need to be reformed. There needs to be fair funding across the whole of the UK. But it's not a view shared by the SNP or sister party. The First Minister said on the floor of this assembly, and I quote, I do not think that the Barnet formula is tenable in the longer term. I think that we all understand that. Clearly, the Labour leader in Scotland doesn't understand that because she said, I think the Barnet formula works for the United Kingdom. The Barnet formula works for the whole of the United Kingdom, and it is a mechanism that has served us well so far. Isn't it the case that it's the leader of the opposition in Scotland who holds more sway with his party leader than he does himself? Well, well the leader of the opposition in Scotland is a woman, so uh, rather than his, her name is Joanne Lamont, but, uh, but there we are. The, the other point to, to remind you of is, is quite simply this, that Scotland will have its own views, Wales will have another. I've made it absolutely clear that we believe the Barnet formula should be reformed. I note that Plaid's sister party in Scotland, the SNP, have said in the event of a no vote, they will fight tooth and nail to keep the Barnet formula as it is. The question, rhetoric, rhetorical question that I ask Plaid Cymru is this, will they condemn the SNP for their comments in that regard, that they will fight against the interests of Wales? I know our question I are a here. Question three is being withdrawn. Question four, no. Question four, Byron Davis. It was a rhetorical question. He Will made the that first point. minister make a statement on future of the Welsh bus network? 
Well, we fully understand the importance of an effective and affordable bus service, which is why we provide significant funding to support the network throughout Wales. And the Bus Policy Advisory Group will advise us on maximising value for public money and securing the best possible provision of services. Thank you, First Minister. Um, given the new financial year starts in four working days, can you explain why your government has failed to inform local authorities what support they will receive through the Local Transport Service Grant? Acknowledge that the uncertainty caused by not having a clear revenue stream to support bus services next year has put many under threat and closed some routes unnecessarily. Will no, you apologise to the people of Wales and ensure your government informs local authorities today? Well, I have to say that we've been clear in terms of what we expect from bus services in Wales and funding. Will he apologise to the people of Wales for his failure to take their side when it comes to electrification of the railways? Will he apologise for that? Will he apologise for taking London's side against his own constituents? His own constituents. We will take no lessons at all from the Tories when it comes to transport when they have sold Wales down the river. Really? Show the paper. Green up your way. What assessment has the First Minister made of the effects of cuts to uh, concessionary, concessionary fare reimbursement rates on rural services in places like Anglesey, where already fares are facing uh, an upward pressure, where there are threats to jobs as well as routes, uh, and where already limited services are, of course, a vital uh, and irreplaceable uh, lifeline to many? Well, the new three-year funding package does follow an independent review of local authorities' arrangements for reimbursing bus operators uh, for offering more than 720,000 concessionary pass holders in Wales, uh, including armed forces personnel and veterans, the ability to take advantage of that concessionary travel. Local authorities are responsible in law for ensuring that bus operators are no better and no worse off as a result of carrying pass holders for free. So it's important, of course, that local authorities take account of that uh, when deciding which services to support. Alan Roberts. Diolch ddiwedd. Uh, Prif wneud yw'r mae'r rhaglen ar gyfer uh, llywodraethu yn sôn am wella at datblygu um, gwasanaethau ar gyfer ardaloedd gwledig. Er hynny, mae cyngor exam yn y gogledd ddwyrain wedi uh, rhoi'r gorau i bob un o'i rhaglenni uh, gwledig um, ac yn deud bod hynny oherwydd cwtogi ar ran llywodraeth Cymru. Er uh, or an Rajan and Quilio, my now grummy bod na ddim cyhoeddiad wedi wedi to gan llywodraeth Cymru o ran in Rugal Togi. Um, but the Himbotlo Nevo, uh, Cungor or Dan Rioleth of Plaid Chi, and Roy of Athesponiad in Popol Sidon, and Nicochet Oachos, a Kutogima? One of Athesponiad, of course, E. Gangor Rexang, one of the Athesponiad of Pabanas, bod na problem Ariano, with the Caligrae Oachos policy of Plaid Chi. Question Pimp Sandy Mewes. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, will you provide an update on how the Welsh Government intends to raise standards for tenants in the private rented sector? Yes, the proposals for raising the standards in the private rented sector, as detailed in the Housing Bill, are mm -hmm. for a mandatory registration and licensing scheme for all landlords and agents operating in Wales. Licensing will involve a successful completion of both training and a fit and proper person. Thank you for that. Um, last week, uh, Shelter Cymru and British Gas launched their report, Fit to Rent, at an event I hosted here in the Assembly. It followed the biggest ever survey of tenants in the private rented sector, and it painted an absolutely shocking picture with almost two-thirds of tenants experiencing some kind of poor housing conditions in the last year. So, First Minister, I'm extremely glad that you mentioned the bill. So, will you join me in welcoming Shelter and CIH Cymru support for the proposed mandatory registration and licensing scheme for private landlords, letting and man management agents in Wales to help ensure that the increasing number of families who are living in this sector have good quality homes? Yes, I do very much welcome that support. I'm pleased that our proposals, as outlined in the Housing Wales Bill, have gathered widespread support in recent months. Of course, the intention is to improve management standards within the private rented sector, and good landlords and agents have nothing to fear. Mark Isherwood. Thank you. And of course, registration without enforcement doesn't change uh, a thing. Um, and the research found that 90% said their health had not been affected in the last year due to landlords not dealing with repairs in poor conditions. Given um, that your housing minister has confirmed that he doesn't have figures for numbers of enforcement actions uh, taken by uh, Welsh government, or local authorities under the housing 
uh, health and safety rating system that local authorities tell me that they assessed 6,500 units last year but generally uh, seek to achieve improvements with advice, support and encouragement rather than enforcement. Uh, how would this proposed legislation address the need for uh, measured enforcement uh, rather than a paper trail which would not necessarily deliver that? No, I believe it does provide uh, the ability for uh, there to be measured enforcement as somebody who spent much time in my previous career uh, suing landlords for housing disrepair. I know full well what things were like in the early 90s for so many tenants. I, I don't think anyone can argue sensibly that we should move to a system where private rented accommodation is of the right standard that we would all expect in the 21st century. Jocelyn Davis. Presiding officer. Uh, First Minister, the Shelter report finds that conditions in the private rented sector in Wales are worse than those being experienced uh, in England, and more than half of the tenants say they'd rather be living somewhere else, and I think that's a very sad state of affairs. And for them, of course, this is the tenure of no choice. Uh, would you say that the private sector, as it stands, is suitable for housing vulnerable homeless families? I think it is inconsistent. I think that the uh, bill itself will provide the opportunity for ensuring that the quality of private rented accommodation increases in the future and that there's better consistency to make sure that the worst catch up with the best or indeed the worst no longer exist. Mick Anthony. Uh, First Minister, would you agree with me that the proliferation of houses of multiple occupancy does nothing to improve quality standards in the sector? and that more effective local authority licensing and enforcement would be good for tenants in the wider community? Yes, I understand that RCT have uh, recently designated a new additional uh, licensing scheme in their area, which will start from the 1st of uh, April, which will mean that all HMOs in the area will now need a, a license. It is important, of course, particularly in areas, um, uh, he will represent one such area, there are others, of course, uh, in the chamber who will represent other such areas, uh, to ensure uh, that there is not a proliferation of HMOs that causes a, a difficulty in terms of community sustainability, if I can put it that way. Uh, of course there is a need for HMOs to accommodate particularly students, uh, but it's important that there is a, a balance struck within the community. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Will the First Minister make a statement on parental preference when choosing schools in the Welsh education system? Well, local authorities must enable uh, parents to express a preference for a school when applying for a place. Thank you very much for that answer, uh, First Minister. You'll be aware that there's a great deal of concern in Denbyshire, in my own constituency, uh, as a result of proposals to close uh, some schools with religious character uh, at the moment, uh, namely a, a secondary school in the, uh, in the north of the county uh, and indeed a, a local church in Wales School just outside Rithin. Now, I appreciate that you will not be able to comment on the specifics of those to particular cases, but what action would you expect local authorities uh, to have to take in order to ensure that there are schools with a religious character in their areas in order to meet the parental preference and pupil preference which is often shown for such schools? Well, the, the member appreciates, of course, that I can't comment on individual uh, circumstances. Uh, where there are existing schools, it's important that there is full consultation inevitably to make sure that uh, changes are made only after understanding the views of the public. It is true, of course, that in many, many areas of Wales there are no schools of a religious uh, character. Uh, that is uh, the, the, to do with the history of those areas. But as with any change in education provision or any school closure, I would expect there to be full consultation. Simon Thomas. Uh, uh, a iaith wrth gwrs, dewis addysg Gymraeg a'i peidio. A, a hyn y bryd, mae awdurdodau addysg Gymru yn amgynghofu ar y cynlluniau Gymraeg mewn addysg strategol, a, ac mi'n disgwyl i broses yn y digwydd yn ystod wythnosau nesaf. A wod i hynny ddigwydd, a byddwch chi fel llywodraeth yn edrych ar y holl cynlluniau strategol yma ar ei chynswth ac cymryd barn cenedlaethol i sicrhau bod dewis rheini i gael addysg Gymraeg yn cael ei, uh, uh, cael ei dywallu ym mhob fan o Gymru. I wish you just to say that the Kentucky board is a very good thing. We have to say that the Kentucky board is a very good thing. We have to say that the Kentucky board is a very good thing. We have to say that the Kentucky board is a very good thing. We have to say that the Kentucky board is a very good thing. We have to say that the Kentucky board is a very good thing. We have to say that the Kentucky board is a very good thing. Uh, does dim uh, ar oedd hyn o bryd bod unrhyw cynllun wedi cwmpo mewn y categori? No. 
Question 7, William Powell. <clears throat> Will the First Minister please make a statement on the Welsh Government's commitment to microchipping animals? We are committed to it. Excellent. Thank you for that uh, concise answer, First Minister. Uh, and in this context, uh, with the forthcoming legislation in mind, uh, the, uh, the microchipping alliance, which is made up of several bodies such as the, the Kennel Club, the RSPCA, and indeed, and indeed also the Dogs Trust, are keen to uh, support uh, the Welsh Government in promoting the requirements of the new uh, legislation coming forward. Uh, in that context, I understand that they've experienced some difficulty uh, due to diary pressure with securing a, a meeting with the Minister to, to um, flesh out their proposals. Would you, First Minister, please urge your colleague, the Minister for Natural Resources and Food, to engage positively with this generous offer from this third sector body? Uh, well, he has heard that offer. Uh, in relation to the answer I gave him earlier on, of course, uh, there are different proposals and different regimes for microchipping different animals. He refers specifically to dogs, as he will know. Uh, from the 1st of March next year, uh, compulsory uh, microchipping uh, will be uh, introduced, and I'm sure the Minister will want to meet with all organisations in order to ensure that the regulations are properly enforced and understood. Nick Ramsey. Yeah. Uh, First Minister, can I concur with the, uh, the, the question and the sentiments raised by Will Powell? I do hope that the Minister will find time soon in the very crowded diary to, uh, to have meetings about this important issue. You'll be aware, First Minister, uh, that only uh, recently, uh, uh, in January, it was reported that uh, Chance, the Staffordshire Bull Terrier that went missing from uh, Barry uh, 10 years ago, had been found and it was just a, a day away from being put down before his microchip was scanned and he was returned to his owners. That's a, a, a human canine example of how, uh, of how microchism really does help people out on the ground. Please will you do what you can to make sure that this issue is promoted and that when the microchipping legislation is finalised that people do know about it and they do, they do get their pets microchipped. Yeah, yeah. Remember this is a good example of why microchipping is so important in terms of identifying dogs in the future uh, and of course uh, it, it will be important as we understand to make sure that people understand the changes in the regulations that will come next March and of course to understand how microchipping can benefit uh, people in terms of <coughs> making it less likely that they will lose a treasured pet. Roger Lynn Thomas. Uh, Gofynion fwy fwy ar fusnesau sydd wedi cofrestru, a mynd i arwenes y fyllfa lle mae rhai pobl yn ceisio osgoi cofrestru fel bod nhw'n gallu osgoi o gofynion sydd arn yno. Na, dwi'n creu bod yna'n uh, iawn. Uh, so na, yn wir, wrth gwrs, byddwn i'n byth yn wneud yn fath o reoliadau yn y lle, yn wrth uh, achos y ffaith byddwn i'n byth ofan yna ni, yn mynd i'n byth o'r sy'n mynd i fynd tu ôl i'r, uh, i'r gyfraith. Na, mae'n bwysig dros ben wrth gwrs bod bod yn ystyried uh, bod unrhyw system cofrestru yn, yn digwydd uh, er les uh, pobl ac anifiliaid ac wrth gwrs i gadw at y reoliadau hynny. Question 8, David Rees. Diolch, David. Will the First Minister make a statement on Welsh Government support for small businesses in Aberavon? Well, we are committed to supporting and working with Welsh businesses to help them grow and create jobs. That's why, of course, for example, we created Business Wales as a streamlined service. Well, thank you for that answer, First Minister. I'm sure you agree with me that small businesses are the heart of a vibrant high street and town centre. In light of the decision last week to try the closure of two slip roads at Junction 41 of the M4, what analysis has the Welsh Government made of the potential impact of this decision on small businesses in Patolbert, and has the Government considered whether any support will be offered to local businesses if they'd suffer a detrimental impact? Well, it is a trial. The trial will last for some six months. We will monitor traffic on both the motorway and local roads, and we will be using footfall data, uh, data from the Aberavon Shopping Centre to assess the effect on town centre businesses. During the course of the trial, comments will also be invited from members of the public, and we are investigating what funding streams might be made available to support local businesses. Myron Davis. Presiding officer, First Minister, in 2012, the Welsh Conservatives published our proposals to revitalise the high streets across Wales. Two years on, it is now evident that you are still dithering 
uh, and have now delayed yeah, yeah, your yeah. campaign, which was scheduled for June 2013 until the end of 2014. Now, our high streets are in a desperate need of support through business rate reform, measures to bring empty premises back into use and moves to make it easier for people to shop locally. Will you commit to bringing forward action to help small businesses across Wales and Aberavon in the summer of 2014? It was a curious question because, uh, as we see this morning, it seems that the independent uh, small business sector in Wales, particularly in retail, is doing better than anyone else in the UK almost. Uh, and so it, it shows that uh, we in Wales are outperforming many other parts of the UK. And it shows, of course, that what we as a Welsh Labour government are doing is once again benefiting the Welsh economy. Bethan Jenkins. Uh, First Minister, just following on from what uh, David Rees would say about the pilot you are um, taking uh, forward um, on the M4, can you explain to us how exactly you will be collecting comments from the mem members of the public? Because my inbox has been full of people really, really um, annoyed locally about what is going to happen, the potential effect of businesses in the area. So we really need to understand how people can take part in any consultation, because I think they feel at the moment that they haven't been fully engrossed in what the Welsh Government are doing on this? Well, I think I'm very clear what uh, will happen. Uh, the Minister will give further details in terms of what the consultation process will be, uh, or rather the, con the process for obtaining views from members of the public will be uh, in, uh, in due course, and that, of course, will inform the final decision as to what happens with this junction. Peter Black. Thank you, Mr. Officer. Minister, thank you for clarifying some of the details on, on the consultation with regards to that, that particular closure. My inbox has also been full of people making comments about this particular issue. Could you just clarify, in terms of the evaluation of this pilot, what weight will be given to the issues relating to traffic compared to the issues relating to the shopping centre? And how will you balance the two in determining whether this experiment should be um, continued or not? Well, I think that needs to... Uh be done when the evidence is assessed. Uh, I wouldn't want to prejudge the situation in any way. Uh, we have the trial, we'll judge the results of the trial in terms of the effect on footfall, in terms of the effect on, on safety and traffic on the M4. We know that section of the M4 uh, was built to a far lower standard than would have been the case if it was built these days. It was originally part of the A48, of course, rather than the M4, which is why there's a problem with that, uh, with that junction. There are other factors, uh, such as footfall, such as local traffic, and we will take all matters into account before a final decision is made. Question nine, Mike Hedges. Thank you, uh, Presiding Officer. Uh, will the First Minister provide an update on the services provided by Cardiff Airport? Yes, we've seen uh, very good growth in the airport with a 9% uh, increase uh, in the period up to uh, February of, uh, of 2014. Uh, we expect to see more passengers coming through the airport in the future, and it vindicates the decision, of course, to make sure that we secure the future of our national airport. Here, here, here. Can I thank you for that response, First Minister? I too welcome the news of a rise in number of passengers using the airport since it was purchased by the Welsh Government last year. Uh, of course, I remember when it was successful before, when it was run by the three Welsh counties, until we had the Tories uh, under John Redwood forcing the local authorities to sell it. Uh, First Minister, do you agree with me that it's time for the Tories to apologise for getting it wrong last time on, on the privatisation of the airport? And, and, getting it wrong, and getting it wrong this time by asking for it to be privatised. And, and what further improvements to the airport can we expect to see over the next 12 months? Well, let's see now then. February passenger numbers total 59,936, a growth of 30% on this time last year. Inclusive tour passengers, uh, passengers were up 15%. Scheduled passengers are up over 35% from February last year. Ad hoc charter boosted passenger numbers are up by over 156% since February of 2013. Yes, we've seen the, uh, the airport grow. Uh, members who are familiar with it will see the work that's being done there now to improve the security area. We will now look at what is done to improve the roads. Uh, that is an example of us delivering an airport for the future, as opposed to the Tories who are happy to see it close. William Graham. Certainly, we welcome the success of Cardiff. We, we wanted to get back to the same state of two and a half million yes, passengers, passengers, but it was under private ownership. Yeah. I'd welcome the suggestions from the First Minister how he's going to publicise those remaining routes at Roos to make sure that all the people in South Wales use it and don't just go to Bristol. Well, I mean, uh, it was under private ownership, but, but passenger levels declined to under a million, I have to remind the, the, uh, remind the member, when it changed ownership to its previous owners. And I remember the Tories on this uh, chamber saying that it should be left to rot. There should be no chance of buying it. I'm a Byron Davis saying there was a £20 million uh, 
uh, funding gap somewhere. Debt didn't exist. Didn't exist. Uh, scaremongering, of course, once again. Uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for what the member has said in terms of welcoming the increase in passenger traffic. It's a shame the Tories can't bring it in themselves to realise it's because of the action taken by the Welsh Government that we have secured the future of the airport rather than seeing it decline and close, which is what they would have done if they'd have been in charge. Alan Fred Jones. Alan Fred Jones. Well, the Nadur Kasson or my Sawir doing Valkyan or Nabodian Kalanokol, Ermi Vadeni in Dwight, but the Ford Bethyan event, or Nadimina Warren and on Isur, or Rohan in or the Nin Glanioni on Christus again in the staff. Um, doing Dias, but never or staff a my Sawir are getting dead by zero hours. Um, I've just got an high honey, me, I got to the honey in Weir, I would do he and some it in Newid honey and Winneb. I have to say, uh, presiding officer, I don't normally comment on asides made by members. When I hear Byron Davis say that buying the airport has meant people are dying of cancer, I think that is a disgraceful comment and I think you should withdraw it. Uh, I didn't hear that, but uh, I would concur. Um, Eleanor Parrott. Uh, um, first Minister, one of the most important ways an airport makes money is things uh, through things like uh, retail, catering and parking services provided at the airport. Can you confirm that in addition to the very welcome increase in passengers, there's been an increase in profits for the support services at the airport? And can you tell us when you expect the airport to break even again, given the um, vast and increasing losses that the airport had been making um, up until quite recently? I will answer the member's question. Now, I do regret the fact that Byron Davis has not been managed to withdraw such a ridiculous statement. That is a matter for him and for him to explain to, them, to the public of Wales. Let me do, deal, of course, with the, uh, the, the question that the member has, uh, has asked. The airport, of course, uh, is now moving towards profitability. We expected to see more passengers coming over the course of the next year, and the figures are very, very good. The important point, of course, is to make sure that footfall increases to improve the profitability of the retail uh, offer there. It's encouraging to see, uh, certainly, that there's been uh, a shop that's moved in the course of the last uh, few months. And I would expect, as passenger footfall increases, as it has, for the airport to move to profitability, because uh, we can't revenue subsidise it, that much is true. And secondly, of course, to see more shops being profitable. Question 10, Susie Davis. Um, what consideration will the Welsh Government be giving to noise pollution in the forthcoming planning bill? Well, uh, I can say to the member that TAN 11 does provide already a comprehensive framework for addressing noise as part of the planning process. Well, thank you for that, First Minister. Of course, uh, a noise from public construction and improvement work can have a major impact on the well-being of those living nearby, not just from the point of view of volume, but of duration, as you know from your own constituency. When contractors run behind schedule, they will seek permission from the local authority to work outside business hours in order to avoid paying a penalty for failure to finish the work on time, thereby exacerbating the effect on residents. Now, as there are no, uh, virtually no successful prosecutions for noise nuisance under existing planning laws, uh, existing laws, how do you think your government can give an effective voice to residents and business owners who complain bitterly that they have no effective redress in the circumstances I describe under the existing guidelines? There is redress in existing law, but I share the member's concern that the existing law may not be as effective as it might be. I, I've had experiences, I'm sure she will have had, of constituents who complain about noise. Monitoring is then done, but often <coughs> it seems that monitoring is done once the uh, emitters of the noise have been warned. <laughs> and that's a situation I'm sure that we've all uh, come across. Uh, consideration may well have to be given, not via the planning bill, but via other means to making sure that where noise nuisance is measured, it's done in an unannounced way. And I think that's where we might need to look in the future. David Ellis Thomas. Ormes. Cynllunio gor hei arnaidd a byr dymor sydd wedi effeithio gymaint arnon ni dros y blynyddoedd. Ac felly a dyr prif i ddod yn sicr y bydd y bil yn ymddangos ym mis gorffennau fel sydd wedi addo, ac y bydd y biliau am gylcheddol sylweddol yma yn cael digon o gyfle i'w trafod yn llawn gael bobl Cymru fel, pa, fel yn bod ni o wrthyddi o'r newydd yn y meisydd hwn yn gwneud gwahaniaeth gwirioneddol. 
Mwn am bwysig dros ben, wrth gwrs, er mwyn sicrhau bod unrhyw biliau'n effeithiol yn, uh, yn y, y dyfodol, a wyth yn derus, wrth gwrs, bydd na ddigon o drafod yn y lle hyn, ac wrth gwrs, gyda'r cychoedd uh, yn, uh, yn, yn fwy eang. Question 11, Simon Thomas. Pa, uh, diolch lewydd. Pa, tywydd mae'r prif yn eidog wedi cael ynglyn â safonau iaith gymaig ar faithedig. Wel, cafodd y safonau draft uh, i gyhoeddi ar uh, wechyd o iwnawr, Ac lyfr sy'n gadael y pryd yn fy nadganiad ysgrifenedig uh, fy mod i wedi cytuno ar comisiynydd, na fyddwn ni yn uh, gwneud unrhyw sylwadau am y safonau yn ystod yr ymchwiliad safonol, ond bydd yr ymchwiliad yn dod i ben ar y dynawed o Ebrill. Uh, diolch chi fi'n eidog. Uh, Wi'n sylwi uh, wrth craffu ar y ymgynghoriad yma bod uh, wefan y llywodraeth yn cyfeirio at wefan y comisiynydd, a comis wefan y comisiynydd yn cyfeirio yn ôl at wefan y llywodraeth. Felly, fedwch chi gadael nhau ar y broses bod chi'n hapus bod y cychoedd yn cael dweud i dweud yn y broses yma. Ac ydych chi wedyn yn cytuno gyda Plaid Cymru, uh, na ddyl sy'n syfon yn newydd, beth bynnag gyda nhw, mm. ganiatau i ni syrthio o dan y lefel sy'n cael eu paratoi o hyn o byd a dapari gan y cynlluniau iaith bresennol. Well, Dwi ddim o'n wneud unrhyw sylwadau hynny ar y uh, sylwon ei hunain, ond mae'r awydd gadw at hwnna ta beth yw'r yw barn sy'n cael hyn o bryd. Ond, uh, gael dweud yn, yn gyhoeddus felly, mae'n bwysig dros ben bod bo'n rhoi barn ynglyn a hwn, ac wrth gwrs mae'r Comisiwn Neidd fel rhywun sydd yn annibynnol o lywodraeth yn ystyried hwn ar hyn o bryd. Paul Davies. Uh, Diolch llywydd. Prif yn eirog, mae'n uh, hynod y bwysig fod safoner iaith Gymraeg yn briodol. Mae hefyd yn bwysig fod ni yn hyrwyddo'r iaith Gymraeg ac sydd yn bosib. Byddwch chi yn ymwybodol wrth gwrs sy'n bod ni yn ochr hon i'r siambr wedi cynnig creu nod siarter Gymraeg i fusnesu yng Nghymru i gydnabod gwasanaethau cyfrwng Cymraeg o safon uchel yn wedig yn y gweithle. Pa ystyriaeth eich wedi rhoi hyn? Well, ni yn ystyried y uh, gweithle hyn o bryd, ac ni'n deall ar her sydd uh, yna ni a defnyddio uh, yr iaith tifas i'r ysgol. Yna sydd ddim uh, unrhyw profiad o'r iaith tifas i'r, uh, i, i'r ysgol. Ac wrth gwrs, fe, fe, wedi, si, fe, wedi gweud sawl gwaith mewn darganiad yn y siambr hyn. Uh, ni yn ystyried ffyrdd i sicrhau bod y Gymraeg yn cael i uh, hybu yn y gweithle. Ond mae'n rhaid i wneud, uh, fydd i gael yn drwblu'n fawr iawn dros y dyddiau nes y dwetha. Ni yna rai o'r ethyglau sydd wedi sgrifennu ym hypera Llundain sydd yn rhoi fath o farn taw, taw'r iaith Gymraeg yw problem Cymru. Bod, uh, bod na broblemau yng Nghymru o achos y ffaith bod na ormod o bwyslais ar yr iaith Gymraeg. Fi'n gobeithio y byddai yr aelod yn ymuno a fi, uh, uh, ynglyn ar barn sy'n gyda fi, bod na'n rhywbeth hollol anghywir. Uh, bod y ffaith bod gyda ni ar iaith Gymraeg ddim yn dylan i nôl nid 1847 yw'r flwyddyn. Uh, a bod yr iaith Gymraeg yn rhywbeth allan i gyd i, uh, i ddathlu yno a hefyd i gefnogi. Question 12, Russell George. Will the First Minister make a statement on the Welsh Government's policy on NHS continuing health care? Yes, our policy was set out in the 2010 framework for the implementation of continuing NHS health care in Wales. That framework has been revised and the revised framework has been subject to a public consultation exercise and it will then be published in June. Thank you for your answer, First Minister. Two constituents of mine recently came to see me about the future of their direct payment provision, uh, now that one of them is in receipt of a package continuing health care. Uh, the First Minister will, will be aware, of course, of the nuances of this issue, which has, in effect, disempowered them because uh, they have lost the locus of control over the services and service providers that personally uh, 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 for, that tailor their circumstances. I did say to them I would raise this question on their behalf with you, uh, but given that the, that the NHS in England has introduced a personal health budget for patients, which may include direct payments for some types of health care, are there any plans for the Welsh Government to pilot something similar in Wales? No, this is not something we're considering at this moment in time, but of course I would remind the member that in Wales there is a maximum charge for social care, £50 a week. In England there is not, which is why some people are paying up to £300 a week there. Ellen Jones. Prif fwyd mae gan rhai yn unigolion, yn rhai yn y netholaeth i dwi'n gallu meddwl am, ddiddordeb mewn cael taliadau ni o'n gyrchol ar gyfer gofal iechyd parhaus, yn ogystal a uh, gofal uh, cymdeithasol. Felly mae'n siom i fi glywech chi'n dweud y prynau ma fod ych chi ddim ddiddordeb yn edrych ar hyn fel polisi i'r dyfodol, a byddwn ni'n gobeithio falle newch chi ail ystyried i roi'r hawl i rai byrddau iechyd mewn amgylchiadau um, penodol uh, uh, iawn, arbennig iawn, i fod yn medru uh, darparu cyllid ar gyfer gofal gofal parhaus iechyd yn ogystal ag gofal cymdeithasol. Gaid ddweud wrth yr aelod bydd y fframwaith uh, sydd yn cael ei gyhoeddi ym mis Mehebyn yn 
egregor <coughs> se bethra yng nglyn ar defnydd o daliadau union gyrchol. Mi gwybi tho ma achos anodd cwrs bydd mm. y sefyllfa sure. felly yn fwy clir uh, i'ch uh, etholwyr chi. Kirsty Williams. Uh, hopefully, uh, what you publish in June will be a decision support tool similar to that they've had in England for a number of years to ensure there's consistency of approach uh, across Wales. Will your tool also ensure that cognitive impairment as a result of dementia will be adequately reflected and therefore people who suffer from forms of dementia will qualify for continuing health care in the way that they haven't previously in the past, but had they lived in England would have qualified? Well, of course, I mean, we, we, we can compare all afternoon. My, my <coughs> point would be that in England, of course, people have to pay an enormous amount of money for their care in a way they don't in Wales. But dementia, nevertheless, is a serious issue. We know it will be a growing issue in the future. The member is correct. Uh, I don't prejudge what the uh, framework says in June. I simply ask members to consider the framework when it is published, and then, of course, um, members will have questions. I have no doubt at that time. 13, Mark Isherwood. Uh, what are the implications of the UK Government's 2014 budget statement for Wales? Further cuts to the Welsh budget. Uh, well, that's a, a short but sweet answer. Thank you very much indeed. Well, amongst other things, the <laughs> Chancellor uh, announced uh, housing policies that will deliver more than 200,000 new homes. Uh, what, if any, uh, additional resources the Minister will be aware will come to Wales either directly or as financial transaction funding? And will that be committed to housing in Wales? Uh, the total consequential, we believe, will be around about 36 million. Uh, a decision will need to be taken in terms of how that money is, is spent. But that has to be balanced, of course, with the 7.5% cut in revenue funding that we will, will have received over uh, a three-year uh, period. So, uh, yes, 36 million is, is welcome, uh, but nevertheless, uh, it goes nowhere near compensating for the, uh, the loss of funding that the people of Wales have received. Question 14, Julie James. Will the First Minister outline the Welsh Government's plans for developing tourism infrastructure in South Wales? Yes, one such example of how we uh, look to encourage and support tourism is through the Tourism Investment Support Scheme. Thank you for that answer, First Minister. As you'll know, the application for the proposed tidal lagoon sited in Swansea Bay has been accepted by the Planning Inspectorate, and so it looks as if it will build. Once built, a significant piece of infrastructure will be an enormous tourism draw, as well as contributing to our low-carbon energy production. First Minister, will you consider including it as part of our tourism strategy as well as part of our low carbon energy strategy for the future? Well, it's an, it, it is an interesting suggestion that the member makes. We'll have to wait and see uh, when and if it's built uh, and then of course decide uh, how it might be used for tourism and uh, to benefit the local economy. And question 15, Gwyn Price. Will the First Minister make a statement on its loan benefits from the continued membership of the European Union? Well, the EU benefits Wales and Estonia in many ways through structural funds and the CAP programme. Uh, for example, uh, EU projects in Caerphilly, which of course, uh, it, it, as a county, includes the members' constituency, have assisted almost 42,000 individuals. And last year, over 2,500 people were employed in the local authority area by 35 <coughs> companies from across the EU. Thank you for that. And so, First Minister, you can see the benefits of European generation across this line. Do you agree with me that those who want to use this forthcoming elections to call for us to leave are putting not just this, but thousands of jobs at risk? Yes, uh, le leaving the EU would jeopardise some 150,000 jobs. It would, it, would, it would end farming in Wales, bluntly, because without the uh, subsidies that farming receives, most farms are not viable. It would also cut us off from one of our most important markets, uh, why change what we know works? Uh, why change a system that's provided so many thousands of jobs to Wales? Uh, and why cut ourselves off to become a little island, or an island in a bit? Uh, I think that is the wrong approach for Wales, the wrong approach for Britain, and the wrong approach for Europe. We now move to